Let's talk about the instructor experience. First, the instructor will log in. And these uh, logins can be given uh, by myself or at WASTO uh, beforehand. And we, we were able to, to create these quite quickly. The instructor will have a, a home page similar to this. If they were to click courses, they will see uh, the courses that they have available. They can create uh, their, their own classes um, as they wish. And if they come and they click here, they'll be able to see the learners that have been added to their class. And they are able to edit that on their own. If they click uh, print access codes for all learners, this will give the learner ID QR codes I spoke about that the students need to scan in addition to the session QR code. These codes allow the students to sign in with their ID. Um, this way that their progress can be monitored and associated with their ID. We spoke about the, the possible need to have QR codes or learner IDs that are more uh, temporary. So any, kind, any learner that walks in can use an ID and that is still possible. Just that the, the learner data that we would uh, have would not be so useful as there would be multiple learners using the same ID. But this still allows anyone to come into the, the speaking club, the, the learning class, and use an ID and have a seat, have a place in the application. We come back to the home page and click on learners. We can see here a list of all the learners that are registered. And we can see their access code. So if a student needs to see their access code again, you could show that. We can edit their name and we could also remove them. If we go to add the learner, it's quite easy. We click that button and we type in their name and a QR code will be generated for them. Let's get a session going. So I'm gonna go back to courses. And I'm gonna click start classroom session at the top. When I click that, I'm presented with a screen for inputting preferences here for the session. I can toggle the duration. I can make that as little as 30 minutes, or I can make it as much as two hours. The language proficiency, I can toggle that as well. There are A1 and A2 levels, but that restricts some of the features of the application as less, there are few activities that can fully accommodate low levels such as A1 and A2. B1 to C2 allows all activities and functionality. So I will pick B2. Uh, for ages, we do this to ensure that the content is appropriate. We do filter the content uh, regardless of the age to make sure that it's appropriate and there is nothing controversial. Uh, type of session is an interesting feature where we can toggle if the session is going to be more academic or more fun. So we may have activities that have uh, prompts for writing or speaking. Those prompts may be more academic in nature, whereas fun would be more creative and a little less serious. Focus skills here are quite clear. If you want to focus more on your speaking, we will heavily weight activities with speaking activity, uh, speaking uh, aspects more, so they have a higher probability of being chosen. When you click continue, you're next, taken next to the topic and vocabulary screen. Here, you can enter your own topic and subject and that can also generate its own vocabulary automatically. Or you can click suggestions that are presented to you based on the, the intensity between fun and academic, the age, and your other inputs in the previous screen. So here we clicked artificial intelligence, and you can see here that the vocabulary terms for this session have already been generated. These are gonna be the target vocabulary that in fact will generate all the content, all the content that will be used, the, the prompts, 
uh, will be based on maximizing exposure to these vocabulary terms. This is using the concept of space repetition, where we're repeatedly introducing or repeatedly showing and exposing the learners to these vocabulary terms so that we can convert their working memory into long-term memory. After you confirm the vocabulary and the topic, you are taken to a review screen where you could just see that what you have inputted is going to be created. And if you want to go back, you can edit that. I think it's fine, so I'm going to click Create Session. Then we have a screen that shows uh, while the session is being built. Now, here we can see finalizing session. We can see the courses that are being generated here. When that's finished, the learners will have, uh, the instructor will have a screen such as this. This is the QR code to join the classroom. Now, you can see here a, a review. Uh, this is another topic and another uh, example of screenshot. So uh, we have the vocabulary terms here. We have the topic as well and it, the QR code here. And then below that, we have active learner sessions. Now, this is going to change as learners start to join. As you can see here, we have two groups that have joined, that have been formed and students have joined. Now, those groups are not just here uh, for reference for the teacher. They're actually going to become a visual indicator of their activity. As you can see here, we're able to see how many learners, and we're also able to see what activity they're on and then the playing duration. Notice that the playing duration is green. The playing duration color bar will the uh, bar color will change based on if they are behind or too far ahead. If they are behind where they're expected to be, that will turn to red. That indicates to the, the instructor or teacher that they should probably come to this group and check on them. If they are to, uh, so for example, we can look here, we can see that the playing duration is red and it is, and it is ahead of the activity. This means that they're taking too long, whereas this playing duration bar is green. So these indicators, if they're taking too long or if they're going too fast, We'll let the instructor know they should check. If they're going too fast, maybe they're skipping a lot of the, the content. 